Hi, I'm Magda, and in this video series, I will show you how to use AIMSONX strategic modeling tools for the development of a four-step model. We will see how to define experiments for generation attraction, distribution, model split, and assignment for private vehicles and for transit passengers. We will also see how to build a four-step model experiment connecting all the steps. Go to the Tutorials tab folder and choose the Modeling Travel Demand tutorial. For this tutorial, you can find the documentation by clicking on this button. This will open the documentation for the exercise and you can also select the initial network that we will start with. When selecting the initial network, you will have to choose for a folder in which to store the ANG file and all other related files. Let's choose the modeling travel demand folder. And this is the model with which we will be working for these exercises. For the first step, the generation attraction, there are some objects that have already been defined in this network. For example, if we browse on the project window, we will see that we have a set of attributes for land use data, a set of land use data sets, one for each horizon of study, then some macroscopic areas, two of them for um, the generation and attraction. All the centroids in our network have already been classified and belong to one of these generation attraction areas. So if you double click on any centroid and go to the land use data tab, you will see that the generation attraction area has already been set up. The rest of elements already available are the time periods, transportation modes, and trip purposes. About the trip purposes, there is an information that has already been chosen for this exercise and that has an influence in the generation attraction um, execution, which is what will be the balancing method after the first calculation of the generation attraction. When generation totals and attraction totals do not match, what is the balancing method that we want to use, which can be having both free and calculating the average value or having one fixed and the other one free. In this case, we will um, calculate the balancing by calculating the average of origins and destinations. For the time periods, we have decided to work with the A and peak period. For the transportation modes, we have three transportation modes that we will be considering later on for the model split, that's bicycle, car, and PT. And we have a fourth transportation mode, which is the aggregation of these three in order to treat the data of the generation attraction with one single transportation mode, not yet split it into the later three we will use in the third step. This all aggregated mode will be used when we introduce the data in the macroscopic areas. We have two types of macroscopic areas for generation attraction. These generation attraction areas contain the coefficients, the generation attraction rates that our model will use for the trips calculation. So in here, for the transportation mode, all, which is the aggregated one, we have generation and attraction factors for the different land use data attributes for each one of the trip purposes. All these lists of objects that we have defined, as you can see, is not constrained in number. You can add new generation attraction data set attributes, new land use data sets, macroscopic areas, whatever. You can uh, decide for your context, for your model, which will be the elements that you need to define. The data sets have not been introduced into the model yet. So right now, centroids do have a tab folder for land use, but these values are empty. These values are supposed to be read from an external file that has been stored in the selected folder in the resources folder. So in here, we have this census data 2012 txt file, which contains the data for all the transportation zones in our network and the data for each one of the attributes that we have defined, number of houses, inhabitants, jobs, student seats, number of students, etc. So in each one of these columns, we have the information for each one of these attributes. We will read this information into the land use uh, data set for 2012 by using 
the import tab folder. In here, we will select the file. We will read from. And we will set the format for this file. We are reading external IDs for each one of the centroids. We will skip the first line with the headers. Column separator is the tab, and we will read information for eight columns. The first one being the centroid ID, second one, the number of houses, third one, the number of inhabitants, then the number of jobs, number of student seats, number of students, number of workers, and shopping square meters. This is the format we have our text file with, and so we will import this data from the file, confirming in the log window that data for 15 centroids has been imported. We can, of course, also check that this information is now available in the land use folder for each one of the centroids. Now that we have introduced this data into our AIMS and Next model, we can also use view modes to visualize them. Create a new view mode that we will rename into a jobs diagram. And this view mode will contain a style that will show for each centroid a diagram of type histogram. Let's choose a size of 50, and we will be showing the generation attraction attribute, number of jobs, and number of workers. Let's apply this view mode that we just created, and we will get this type of diagram. OK, so we have all the data that we need in order to define our generation and attraction scenario and experiment. So let's go to the scenarios folder and create this generation and attraction scenario first. This is the generation and attraction scenario for 2012 that will use the census data 2012. We'll obtain the generation attraction vectors for the AM peak hour. We'll consider aggregated transportation modes. So this one is the old transportation mode. And we are informing the model already that this poll will disaggregate into this tree into car, bicycle, and PT. We will ask him next to generate the generation and attraction vectors for all the three purposes that we are considering. And let's create the new experiment that we will execute. The results of the generation attraction experiment are three generation attraction vectors, one for each one of the three purposes that we are considering. They have been balanced, and from here we can generate the vectors. These vectors will appear inside the centered configurations. We will have one for each one of the three purposes. Now that we obtain these generation attraction vectors, we can also visualize them on the 2D view by generating a new view mode. Let's create a new view mode, which will be the, the GA totals work, adding a new style, which will be a diagram. Let's do a circle diagram this time with size 40, in which we will be showing the totals for the GA vector generated and attracted. For example, for the three purpose work, let's choose colors that can be clear and let's apply the view mode that we just built. Once we have generated our GA vectors, the next step in the four step model is the distribution step. The distribution step will convert these vectors into matrices, still with no transportation mode assigned yet, but already distributing the trips from origins to destinations. In order to run a distribution, we also need to get some information. In this case, we have already available here the distribution deterrence and impedance functions that we will be using in the distribution process. Plus, we have our distribution data set. In this case, we are not using 
any extra data that we need to introduce here, but we could add some extra information. And we also have the parking area and two different distribution areas. In this case, the distribution and model split areas already have assigned the distribution and model split corresponding functions, and so we don't need to fill them in. They are ready. In the centrics, we also have a distribution and model split folder in which we will have the information on how these areas are classified and we can have extra data. The distribution and model split impedance combines the different costs for the different transportation modes in order to reach from an origin to a destination. In this case, in this model, we already have this initial scheme matrices available, so that's the input that we will need to give into the scenario for distribution. This distribution scenario for 2012 that will build the distribution matrices for each one of the three purposes, so for each one of the vectors that we just built in the previous step, and that will combine the total cost matrices for car bicycle and public transport. In the distribution impedance functions, we can check that the only scheme cost that we are going to take into account in this example is the E cost, which corresponds to this column here. Let's create the new experiment. For the experiment side, we have two different available algorithms for the distribution calculation, which are the gravity model and the destination choice model. You will find more information on these two models in our help. For this exercise, we will be using the gravity model. And so in the experiment 2012, we will choose the deterrence function. And we are ready to execute. After execution, we will see the values of the average impedance for each one of the three purposes the convergence, and we will be able to generate the matrices from this summary folder. These matrices are trips done by individuals. They have not yet chosen their transportation mode for each one of the trip purposes that we are considering. After generating the trips for individuals, we can go to the third step, which is the model split, so that these trips are assigned to one particular transportation mode. For the model split, we are also considering this classification in distribution and model split areas, but for this one, the model split functions have not yet been chosen. So in here, we have different model split utility functions that combine, again, the scheme costs and the model split discrete choice function. In the distribution area, non-urban and urban, we have to go to the model split utility functions folder and fill in the functions that we will be using for each one of the purposes. For the shopping, we have the shopping non-urban, study, work, and urban, study, and work. Also, it is important to take into account the average occupancy of private vehicles for each one of the three purposes that we are considering. So we should go to the user classes that have been created automatically by AIMS and NEXT on the go as we were generating generation attraction vectors, matrices that uh, had all these associations. So user classes are the couple vehicle type plus trip purpose. And so in here for car shopping, car study, and car work, in the travel demand folder, we should fill in what will be the vehicle occupancy. For work, that would be 1.3. Shopping goes up to 2. And study is a value of 2.7. Also, there is a parking area already defined in this model for which we can constrain the number of parking slots for private uh, vehicles in order to reach this CVD area to which several centroids belong to. 
So in this case, we will put a value for the parking slots that is high enough in order not to constrain the rest of user classes. And we will set the maximum number of parking slots available for cars for any three purpose and for cars with three purpose work. Now we are ready to create our model split scenario. In which we will be generating the matrices per transportation mode for the 2012 horizon AM peak period for these three matrices. Again, taking into account the total cost matrices for each one of the transportation modes. And we will apply parking slots on the arrival side as we are working in the AM peak hour. The model split functions will be applied according to the departure side of each trip, according to the origin. We can create a new experiment. And inside the model split experiment, we will choose which is the discrete choice function that we want to use for the model split. Now we can proceed with the execution of the model split experiment. The summary of the outputs include the mode share for each one of the three purposes. And by clicking on the generate matrices, we will get the outputs of the model split, that is the three matrices by purpose for each one of the transportation modes available, car, bicycles, and PD users. These three sets of matrices can now be assigned, getting to the fourth step of the methodology. In order to do so, we will use the static assignment for cars and bicycles and the PT assignment for PT passengers. Let's create the traffic demands for each one of them. One for cars. You can see the times automatically correspond with the defined AM period that we are using, 7 to 10. Then one traffic demand for bicycles. And one for PT passengers. We will now create the scenarios and experiments for the assignment of these three demands. For the public transport, assignment scenario, we will choose the traffic demand for PT users and we will also select the PT plan in order to take into account the available lines and their timetables. For cars, we will select the demand and we can also add the PT plan in this case in order to take into account the PT vehicles that will be using the network simultaneously with cars. For bikes, we will select the traffic demand and that will be enough. For the experiments, we will run the car static assignment with a Frank and Wolf assignment. For bikes, we will run a stochastic assignment in which we will consider bikes choosing from three different paths we will choose the function bicycles as a discrete choice function, and we will assume as initial node the volumes from the car static assignment. For the public transport assignment, we will create an MFA assignment experiment 
in which we can choose, for example, we can activate the congestion model, we can apply a transfer penalty function, and so on. So as you can see, some elements are already available in the network, as for example, the PT cost functions. Now, if we want to store the assignment path choice outputs, before running the assignments, we must prepare the path assignment objects that will link with the APA files that store path results. So inside the demand data folder, we will create three different path assignments. One for car, one for bicycle, one for PD users. And now we can go back to each one of the experiments and select a path assignment to store each one of the path results. We will now define function components in order to get extra outputs for the car assignment. The cost functions that are already defined for the car assignment include in their definition two subfunctions that are called distance and t time. We will use these keywords in order to identify these subfunctions so that the assignment generates extra columns with outputs corresponding to the evaluation of these two subfunctions. We will also combine these two in order to calculate the speed in the desired units in kilometers per hour. So let's create three function components, two of them which would refer to this distance and t time. And so in here we have to write the function screen to identify it. The third function component will be the derived one. It will contain the speed in kilometers per hour. And it will be calculated by using the distance divided by time and multiplied by a coefficient to convert from kilometers and minutes to kilometers per hour. The function component for the distance is in kilometers, but the function component time is in this case in minutes. Now we can run the static assignment for cars and among the different results, the different outputs, we will have, for example, in the sections table, the values corresponding to these three function components. We can also check the path assignment results. In this dialog, we can do different analysis. For example, we can show all trips that go through section 303. Let's list all paths through this section and click on the link analysis button. This button generates automatically a view mode that shows these specific trees on the 2D view with a bar that's proportional to the number of trips on each section. Let's also run the bicycle assignment. As you can see, the total volume for PCUs includes cars. And we can also run the public transport assignment. The assignment will give us results in terms of passengers, not vehicles. So we have loads, alighting, boardings. We can have also for the PT lines their profile of loads, alighting and boardings in each uh, public transport stop or for each public transport segment from stop to stop, etc. Among other results, assignments will produce scheme matrices. In any of them, you can select the outputs to generate to be by default scheme matrices. And these scheme matrices are the input for the distribution and model split. Having now new scheme matrices that are more realistic than the initial ones we used, the iterative nature of the four step model is clear. If we continue building the process, we will look now back to the steps two and three and assign again until we reach a certain convergence criteria. All this structure of experiments, inputs, and outputs can be put all together in a single diagram that we can execute 
with a single click in the four-step experiment. So let's create a new scenario for the four-step model and a new four-step model experiment. In this canvas, we can build now the diagram for the four-step model we prepared up to this point. The first step was the generation attraction. Right-click in order to choose from all the options for the box creation, and this generation attraction box should be related with the generation attraction experiment that we already defined. Then we were running a distribution, which was related to this distribution experiment, and it was receiving the outputs of the generation attraction, the vectors, as inputs. And it was also using the three initial scheme matrices. So let's generate the boxes for these scheme matrices too. One was the scheme matrix for cars, the other one for bicycles, and the one for PT. These boxes can be renamed here in the settings. And we have to link them with the distribution. After that, we were running a model split. This model split was receiving as input the output from the distribution. Those were the individual matrices. And the model split was also using the same initial scheme matrices. This model split was producing the ORI matrices with the trips for each trip purpose and each transportation mode. And these matrices were feeding the three different assignments we prepared. So one was the Frank and Wolf assignment for cars. We also had the stochastic assignment for bikes. And the public transport assignment. So we link again outputs with inputs. In each one of the connections, we must make sure we are sending the right matrices through. So for cars, we will deselect all the matrices that belong to bicycle and PT users. And we will do the same with the other two connections. Also, the stochastic assignment was receiving the car preload. So the results in terms of volume from the Frank and Wolf should be input to the stochastic assignment. Now we have this experiment ready for execution. Executing this experiment will run one by one in order all the experiments in the diagram. Before running it, though, we must make sure that all the scenarios that we had defined our storing results. So let's check all of them and make sure we are storing results for all of them. And now we can run the first step model experiment and you can see in the log window how this will be done.